Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor. Today we're going to be doing an individual book review for Bear Otter and the Kid by T.J. Klune. If you guys don't know, I read The House in the Cerulean Sea earlier this year, really adored it, so I wanted to continue along and read more of Klune's works. I also read Wolf Song by him, which is the first book in the Green Creek series, and I'll leave the link to my review up in the card symbol if you want to check it out. This is the first book in an adult contemporary romance series that I think the series name is just Bear Otter and the Kid. It doesn't have like a different name. If you guys don't know, this follows a character named Bear. At the very beginning of the book, on the eve of him turning 18, his mother writes a letter to him and basically abandons him and his little brother, which is the kid. Bear's little brother is five at the time, so basically Bear at 18 starts having to raise his little brother in earnest by himself. What ends up happening is that Bear pushes off going to university because he won't be able to do that full-time and take care of his little brother full-time. And so Bear, with his network of support, meaning his friends and his friends' families, takes on the task of raising the kid, and it follows that. There's a bit of a time jump in here, so what the majority of the book follows is Bear three years after that. He's 21, his little brother is eight, and the brother of Bear's best friend, Otter, comes back to town, and it seems that Bear and Otter may have had a bit of a history that no one else knew about, and Bear has to confront that. It says on the back, this time though there's nowhere to run from the depth of emotion between them. There could be something more for him in the world, something or someone. And then it follows the romance love story. As usual with my book reviews, I'm gonna go through my pros, go through my cons, give you my rating, and be done. First though, we're gonna talk about a couple of neutrals. One thing I've noticed while reading a lot of TJ Klune books in quick succession is that TJ Klune seems to love age gap romances. So there's an age gap romance in here, Wolf Song is an age gap romance, so just be aware of that. If it's gonna bother you, maybe give this one a pass. My husband and I have an age gap that's bigger than this one, so I don't mind age gap romances at all. The age gap in here is eight years, so Bear is 21 and Otter is 29 during the main part of this story, and I think it's interesting that a lot of TJ Klune's books also have a lot of found family elements, and it seems like a lot of his pairings look similar to each other. <laughs> so one of them always has like brown hair, dark features, and then one always has blonde hair. So that's in here, it's in Wolf Song, and it's also in The House in the Cerulean Sea, so I thought that that was interesting. As I go through more of his works, I'll see if that continues to be something that happens over and over again. Another neutral for me is that Bear reminded me of Gordo from the Green Creek series. I mean, there are differences, but there's a lot of similarities and a lot of the hangups that Bear has in this were similar to the hangups that Gordo has in that series, so I thought that, that was interesting. And my last neutral for this book is that the narrator of the story, Bear, breaks the fourth wall and talks directly to the reader. I don't mind when books break the fourth wall, but some people don't like them as much, so just know that going in. My first pro for this book is that I really enjoy the found family elements that TJ Klune seems to always put in his books. I said that it's in The House in the Cerulean Sea, it's also in the Green Creek series, but I really enjoyed it in this one as well. Bear's in a pretty tough spot. He just turns 18 and now he has to take care of a five-year-old old and raise the five-year-old. And I really enjoyed that all of the people that care about Bear and care about the kid really come together and form this bigger found family. I really enjoyed Bear's best friend Creed. I thought that Creed's reaction when he came back to town and everything was totally different was pretty funny. I also really like that Creed is not perfect and a lot of the characters in here aren't perfect. They all make mistakes and they all hurt each other, but then they make up for it and it's just... I just love their love. One thing that I wasn't expecting was that I really loved Anna in this, which is Bear's girlfriend at the beginning of the story. I thought Anna was great. I really enjoyed her interactions with Bear and how she goes about growing in this story. And one character that is a part of this found family that got better and better and better and funnier as the novel went along was Miss Paquin. I don't know how to say her name, but I was really enjoying her as well. So I just loved this found family. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what happens in the future of this series with everything. <laughs> and I think that one of the reasons why I like this found family so much is that all of the characters have their own shit going on. They all have their own troubles and their own goals and their own lives. TJ Klune is really good at making sure that all of the characters are well-rounded and have desires and have goals for their lives. So the side characters aren't just sitting around until the main character interacts with them. The side characters are doing things behind the scenes and have their own lives moving forward during this plot. So it's not just about Bear, Otter, and this kid. All of these characters 
have their own lives, and I really appreciate that. I think what a lot of people like in this series is the banter between the different characters, especially with the kid. The kid's name is Tyson, and Tyson is the smartest eight-year-old <laughs> ever. Tyson only watches the news. He watches Anderson Cooper a lot, which was funny because this book came out before Anderson Cooper came out. But yeah, Tyson is super into animal rights and is a vegetarian. Some people find him very unrealistic, but I think that's one of the charms of this book. I just really enjoyed Tyson and seeing him interact with his older brother and keep his older brother accountable. The kid in this reminded me of the child that's in The Switch, which is a movie that has Jason Bateman and Jennifer Aniston in it. So if you liked The Switch, I think you'll really like the kid character in this as well. His dialogue makes him seem a lot older than he is, but I think that he has enough kid characteristics and desires that he does seem young still, <laughs> even if he's way more emotionally intelligent than a lot of the other characters. As I said, I really enjoyed the banter between the characters. I think that this book is really, really funny. <laughs> the banter and the one-liners that the characters have really balance out some of the heavier, sad moments of this book. So you get a wide mix of emotions while reading. I've seen people say that this book made them cry, and I understand why, but this book made me laugh a lot more. I think TJ Klune's writing style is one that you just absolutely fly through. I read his books so quickly and enjoy them because of that. I will say that in this, this has a lot of passages about stormy weather and stuff like that and comparing Bear's life to a storm or something like that. I thought that those could bog down the writing just a little bit, but overall I really enjoyed the writing in here because it is so easy to get into and fly through. Obviously a pro for me in this was Bear. He has a lot of internalized homophobia and I enjoyed seeing him start to unpack a lot of those things. Bear is a freaking mess of a human, so I enjoyed seeing him start to tidy himself up a bit. <laughs> he has a lot of things to deal with. He obviously is still raising his brother. He has his future in mind. He's dealing with the fact that he likes another boy and isn't quite in love with his girlfriend as much as he thought he was. Bear also has a lot of inner monologue, so if you don't like being inside his head, you're gonna not like this book because he has a lot of arguments in his own mind. It reminded me of The Emperor's New Groove with the character Krunk, how he has the angel Krunk and the demon Krunk and they argue. It was kind of like that because he has a lot of arguments with himself and they can go on for quite a while, but it was important for his character growth that he confront himself about how he's feeling and what he's doing. I'm also a sucker for big bro, little bro relationships in books. Bear is about 12 and a half ish years older than his little brother and I like seeing that because my little brother and I are 10 years apart, so I could definitely put myself in the shoes of Bear in terms of how he feels about his little brother and how much he loves his little brother. Like if something were to have happened when we were that age difference, I totally would have done the exact same thing and pushed off going to college so that I could take care of my little brother. So I love the big bro, little bro relationship. And my last pro with Bear that I'm gonna talk about is that I really liked that he is continually questioning his sexuality throughout the course of this book. He hasn't really figured it out yet. He just knows that he has an attraction, both physically and emotionally, to Otter, and that's good enough at the end of the book. But I do like that he is still questioning exactly where he falls on the spectrum. I've seen some people shelve this book as like a gay for you romance, but to me it seemed more like Bear had an emotional connection, like a very strong emotional connection to Otter and then the physical attraction started, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So I thought that maybe he was demisexual, but I have no idea. And my last pro that I'm gonna talk about for this book is that I just really enjoyed this very sweet story. I think that you could probably read this book as a standalone and leave it at that and not continue on with the rest of the series. I will probably be continuing just because I'm curious to see what will happen next, but I really enjoyed how this story ends because it ends on a very cathartic note. As for cons, I felt like this book could be way over dramatic about everything. <laughs> Even small little things become these huge deals in this book, and so it just was like, oh my god, why are you so messy? <laughs> but I will say that it is super self-aware about that. It even talks about how angsty this book is in the book. Bear is a just ball of angst, and he is aware that he is very angsty. <laughs> to me, I felt like the relationship in here developed maybe a little bit too quickly. This book does span a few months. I think it's like a summer or something like that, but 
I just felt like it was so fast. Once they got together, they were like in love almost immediately. <laughs> and maybe that does happen, but I think what would have been better is if some of their history had been sprinkled in towards the beginning so you could see that they had such a strong bond already in place. And that's why they got to the point that they did so quickly. But as it is, you don't really know the depth of their relationship until much later. Yes, they have known each other for a really long time, but they haven't been speaking for at least three years. It just seemed like they went from zero to 60 super, super quick. And I like romances that happen a little bit slower. This book also has a lot of casual homophobia in it. Some of it is addressed like one of the characters uses the F word for a gay person a lot and that gets addressed in here but there are other instances where homophobic things are said but then not really addressed. For instance at one point one of the characters is like oh it's so sad that Otter is gay because he'll never have kids. It's like <laughs> gay people have kids all the time so I don't understand how that went under the radar. And there are other instances where small little things are said or done that I was like, huh. I've discovered as I'm reading through TJ Klune's books, which all have a high amount of angst, except for The House in the Cerulean Sea, that one doesn't have as much. He loves his books to have a lot of angst. And how he does it is that he makes them a bit repetitive. Bear in here repeats over and over and over again about how Otter left town for three years and you left me and you left me and you left me. I was like, I get it, you're upset. It's one of those things where the repetition of those phrases and the repetition of how many times they talk about this stormy ocean situation is what brings the angst to the novel. And I don't really love all of the repetition. I think that you could do it a few times and it would still get the point across but it's just a little bit too repetitive. At least I think so. I mean, I still really, really enjoyed this, but it does get a little repetitive. And my last con is just like a one-off. It was so weird that at one point, a lady is described as looking like she's in blackface just because she has really large sunglasses. I was like, well, that is such a weird way to describe a person. And it was just a weird choice. Okay, and I guess one more thing is that the description of the characters are all very like, this is what they look like. It is all up there right up front and there isn't as much slow describing of characters. So you get a rundown every time you meet each character and I think that it could have been spread out a little bit more and maybe less in your face about what each character looked like. But this is TJ Klune's first novel and so for being a first novel, I'm very impressed. <laughs> so overall, I had an absolute blast reading this. I had a lot of pros for this. I had a few cons. So I ended up giving this book like four stars of all of the TJ Klune books. This one has been the lowest one that I've rated, but I still really enjoyed it and I'm very much looking forward to continuing. So that's gonna be my review on Bear, Otter, and the Kid by TJ Klune. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you've read this book. Have you read anything else by TJ Klune that you would recommend? I have a few more books of his on my TBR, so hopefully I get to those soon. Anything else you want me to know, leave it down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.